<laughs> so Katie McEnany, co-host of Outnumbered with us, and good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, two things come to mind just over the past 24 hours. She was asked on CBS if Trump was unfit for office, mm -hmm. and she declined to answer that. I thought that was somewhat telling. And then there's this quote from the Politico piece about Haley turning her fire on Trump. Um, Mike Dennehy says she cannot go nuclear on Trump because she will lose any Republican support she currently has if she does so. How do you view that right yeah, now? Mike Dennehy is spot on. She's walking a tightrope. Look, she has to go after Trump and fight back. Go look at his true social feed. He's going after her, so she has to defend herself and try to make inroads and cleave votes away from her opponent, but not go personal. To your point, on CBS, she would not say he's unfit for office. On CNN, she was asked about the E. Jean Carroll case. She declined to comment. She's not going personal in a way that perhaps Chris Christie did. He got double-digit support in polling in New Hampshire, but beyond New Hampshire, there was nothing left for him. So getting those independents, but at the same time not isolating MAGA voters as you go down the line to South Carolina Super Tuesday, it's a tall order. She's doing it well. What about Vivek Ramaswamy, who decided on in Iowa that that was going to be the end of the road for him? He immediately backed President Trump, endorsed him, and then joined him last night. Take a listen to some of the supporters cheering for Vivek Ramaswamy last night. In case you couldn't understand that, they're screaming Veep for Vivek Ramaswamy and President Trump sort of teasing wow, that as well, saying that he will be around for a long time. Chances of him being vice president, what do you think? I think slim to none. First, Jason Miller was asked about this. He advised President Trump and he said no to Vivek. However, that was before Vivek dropped out. Mm -hmm. I think when you're looking at a vice presidential candidate, you don't want a carbon copy of the nominee. And in many ways, Vivek and Trump, they pick up the same base of voters. It's the MAGA voters, the conservative voters. You want someone who's going to add to your ticket. And particularly, I think we're at a moment in time similar to 1980, where Reagan chose George H.W. Bush to unify the Republican Party. Trump needs every single Republican vote. So choosing someone who is just like him, uh, I think, is a fool's errand. Can well. Trump do that and still keep everybody in the fold? That is the big question. I think he can. I maintain that Trump has such a lock on the Trump base. In fact, I think history will look back on this and say it is perhaps one of the strongest movement, movements in modern American history. I don't think they leave Trump under any circumstance unless he betrays his principles. But I think picking up a VP that Trump says, look, we need to win suburban women. Mm. We need to win in independent voters. We've got to unify the party. I think that's something the base will understand. Wow. I, you wonder a week from today whether or not it's over. I mean, it's just a thought. It could be. Uh, call for number seven. Uh, Suffolk University, Boston Globe, they found Trump at 46, Haley 26, uh, and DeSantis down at 8% there. And then Chris Sununu, the governor uh, in New Hampshire, joined us yesterday when we were in Des Moines. Check it out. There are expectations here in New Hampshire. We wanted to give her a strong second. I, we can almost guarantee that at this point. And now that she's challenging to actually beat Donald Trump in New Hampshire, she's within single digits, um, that puts everything on the table over these next seven days. And if you can kind of kind of shock the system a little bit, giving Trump that defeat here in New Hampshire, uh, that would be a great reset for the, for the entire election. If he's right, uh, it would be a great reset and well, a very interesting dynamic. Then they moved to South Carolina, and Trump's up by 25 points in polling in South Carolina. That's her home state. It, it, exactly. Um, but you look at New Hampshire, 75,000 more independents than Republicans. So Nikki Haley, how many can she draw from that pool? And then we look at these, these categories of Christie voters. The 11 percent, will they go to Haley? The 5 percent for Ramaswamy, will they go to Trump? That makes a difference on the margins. It could make it, you know, a three to five point race somewhere that's achievable for Nikki Haley. But what was interesting, buried in the New York Times, they were talking about internal Christie polling, which shows most of Christie support goes to Nikki Haley. But believe it or not, there was a small number Number that actually went to Trump. You wouldn't think a Christie voter would then go to Trump. My point is, these are not one for one. It's not Christie goes to Haley, right. Ramaswamy goes to Trump. So it could be anyone's game. But beyond New Hampshire, to your point, Trump has a lock on South Carolina, a lock on Nevada, if you believe the polling. And the polling was pretty accurate in Iowa. Well, and turnout was down in Iowa compared to 2016. Part of that, I think, was the weather. And well, so I think that is really important. I imagine that with another storm brewing, that Haley and DeSantis are thinking we got to get our people out. Yeah, and turnout was down. Josh Holmes made the really excellent point. More than 700,000 Republicans registered in Iowa. Only 100,000 showed up. Yeah. And then you had 51% going for Trump. Historic win, but 49% not. 
that's even more of a case for choosing a vice president that can unify the Republican Party, bring out all Republicans from all corners of every state. Good deal. Smart. Great analysis. Smart, smart. Thank you, Kelly. Great to Come have you, back, okay? Thank you. Love Thanks. having you. Let's see where we are in a week. Yes. <laughs> I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.